The Ohio Bat Working Group's All About Bats video series. Hi, I'm Cindy Maravich, Senior Environmental Educator here at Inniswood Metro Gardens. Today's video focuses on the threats to our bat species here in Ohio. We'll talk about invasive species, the loss of their habitat, and the many predators they face. We'll discuss white nose syndrome and wind turbines. And we'll even talk about their biggest threat, their bad reputation. As mentioned, bats face many threats. Today we discuss some of the major threats to bats. One we've been talking about for many years is a fungal disease called white nose syndrome. Something that affects the hibernating bats that sleep through a winters. Bats also have threats from natural predators in the wild. And because of our quest to curb climate change, we've learned that some of the engineering in wind turbines might need to be reconsidered. In addition, invasive species, whether they're plants, mammals, or insects, can wreak havoc on a bat's population. And one of the biggest and most important is the loss of bats habitat. Whether it's on a large scale or small, there's important things that bats need to continue to survive. Since ancient times or even long before that, people have either feared or revered the bat. Folklores, legends, myths, and other stories have been told about bats. Some cultures considered the bat to be evil or a bad omen. Bats have been associated with Halloween, haunted houses, ghosts, and witches, and of course, vampires. And even when we had a superhero that came from a bat, this superhero was dark and moody grumpy, and sometimes even portrayed as scary. In fact, this one had a bad reputation, even though he was a good guy. The predators bats face in the wild are many, but some of the top ones remain other night hunters, like owls. Barred owls, especially here in Ohio, have been known to take bats and feed them to their young. Raccoons are perfectly suited um, as predators to bats because they're excellent climbers and can position themselves very near to where bats roost. Then when the bats fly out in the evening to go hunting, they're in excellent position to snag a dinner. And of course our bats need to visit water areas and who lives there but amphibians. Bullfrogs eat anything that they can fit into their mouths. And so if a bat flies a little too close to one, it could easily be their dinner. What is white nose syndrome? This syndrome is a disease, it's a fungal disease caused by a fungus we refer to as PD. It thrives in these places where bats hibernate. So things, places that are dark and cool. And um, it moves by spores and the spores can be um, moved on people's clothing and their gear and their shoes, um, but it can also be transferred from bat to bat. It doesn't just create a fuzzy white complexion on the bat's nose. That fuzzy whiteness also can contaminate the rest of their body. In fact, it can disrupt their wings by causing the wings to become uh, more thin and brittle. And it also affects their behavior as well. And we've known from studies that bats who are afflicted with white nose syndrome are frequently awakened early from their hibernation. They venture out of their hibernacula and search of food. They run out of energy because they don't have enough in storage and frequently they can't find food because it's still too cold for them to be hunting for insects. There is no cure for white nose syndrome as of yet. Um, and this unfortunately has killed many bats in North America since 2006. The best thing we can do is understand it, keep studying it, and 
stop moving it from place to place. How do invasive species affect bats? Invasive species can have detrimental effects on our bat population. For example, feral cats are an invasive species. In certain areas, we can see many of them and they are frequently cited as one of the top predators to our bat population. In addition, certain invasive plants can have very real effects on bats as well. Burdock can be, is an invasive plant, and this plant can grow rather tall. It also has prickly flower heads, and those flower heads have hooked bracts on them. And when bats are flying in the evening and through the night, they can sometimes fly too close to them and easily become entangled in those flower heads. On a more broader scale, invasive species can be detrimental to our bat population because when you have more invasive species, they tend to take over and create less diversity in the existing species meaning there just aren't as many different types of plants, mammals, or insects in that area. And when that happens, that area becomes much more vulnerable to things like other invasive plants and animals, climate change, or disease. In Ohio, bats use trees during the summer for roosting and to support maternity colonies. Unfortunately, activities such as logging and development can result in the loss of suitable roost trees for bats to use. These activities can also result in fragmentation of forest habitat, which means that large areas of forest get broken up into smaller patches, which can negatively impact bats and other species. Additionally, some bats, such as the Indiana bat, prefer old growth forest, which currently only makes up a small percentage of Ohio's forest. Bats utilize other habitats, such as wetlands, for foraging. And since the late 18th century, 90% of Ohio's wetland resources have been destroyed or degraded through draining, filling, or other modifications. The loss of foraging habitat means that more bats will be competing for food in the same areas, which can create additional pressures for their survival. Finally, some bats utilize caves, mines, or other rock structures during the winter as locations to hibernate, sometimes in large groups, and they often return to the same sites every year. Destroying these hibernacula or modifying them during any time of the year can impact a large number of bats by removing their overwintering location. Wind turbines have been in the news for many years. It's exciting that we are looking into different types of renewable energy and capturing wind energy is a phenomenal process. We have learned though that the engineering of those wind turbines might need adjusted. Uh, the wind turbines are killing birds um, for sometimes the same or different reasons as they're killing bats. Most of the bat species that are um, affected by wind turbines are those bats that are very migratory, that are traveling very long distances uh, at the end of the season to get to their hibernacula. The wind turbines actually can cause disruption in the air pressure. Um, and that becomes a problem because bats' lungs are highly sensitive to sudden changes in air pressure. Um, and their lungs could easily rupture uh, based on uh, where they are and what, how quickly that air pressure changes. So we know that um, there's some good work being done, but more to be done. There are many common myths about bats, which lead to that biggest threat, their bad reputation. Let's talk about some of the common myths people still believe about bats. People believe that bats 
get stuck in people's hair? Well, bats do not fly into people's hair. They use their eyesight and echolocation to try to avoid such collisions. And uh, once they figure out their way, they typically can fly by memory so as not to run into people or get stuck in anyone's hair. People believe that bats are blind. Bats are not blind. All bats have eyes and they can see. However, they see about as well as we do at night, and so they rely on an additional source of uh, location finding called echolocation. It's a sophisticated sensory system based on sound, and they use that to help orient themselves, um, avoid obstacles, and of course, find food in the dark. They don't rely on that completely, but it does assist them um, with the eyesight they also have. People believe that bats turn into vampires. Well, that's just not true, but there are such a thing as vampire bats. Vampire bats can be found in Central and South America, and they actually do feed on the blood of large livestock animals, sometimes lapping up as much as two tablespoons of blood each night. People are very concerned and believe that all bats carry rabies and that they can give it to you. Now, it is true that bats can carry rabies and you could contract it. However, less than 1% of bats carry rabies. And so it's less likely that you are going to contract it from them because not as many of them actually carry it. And although bats get rabies, the disease affects them differently than other animals. While many rabid animals can become violent and aggressive, rabid bats actually become paralyzed. And unlike other animals, bats can recover from rabies and even develop antibodies to it. Bats are not flying mice. In fact, they're not related to mice at all. Bats are actually um, in their own group that's actually named for this intricate hand wing that they have. It's the Chiroptera group, and it actually means hand wing. It refers to that construction of the bat wing that has an elongated hand and finger bone. They're not mice. Mice have their own identity crisis. Bats are generally quite harmless to people. Many plants, such as bananas and saguaro cactus, are dependent upon bats for pollination. More than 90% of the reforestation and rainforest is attributed to bats because of their seed dispersal. But their immediate appeal to many people, particularly here in Ohio, since our bats are insectivorous, is their enormous capacity for consuming insects. Some bat species consume half their weight in a night. That's as many as 600 or more gnat size insects per hour. Bats are in need of protection if they are to survive. They have proven themselves as valuable members of our ecosystem. So it's our job to understand the threats they face so that we can contribute to solutions. Thank you for watching. Bat Week is celebrated every year from October 24th through the 31st. Visit www.batweek.org for more information.